Hello, everybody, and welcome to another uh, review for audio plugin deals. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be reviewing Goliath V2 from Tone Empire. Um, it, it looks uh, like this here, and <clears throat> I'm going to be going through a lot of the um, presets as well as uh, uh, uses for this as well. So hang tight. So what I've done to demonstrate this is I have created um, several... Uh, tracks here within uh, Pro Tools <coughs> so that you can hear the distinct differences um, in the before and after for a compressor and EQ. Sometimes I know when people show these um, demos and they show the uh, the compressors and the EQs and stuff and they say before and after and you, you're listening, you're going, I, I can't even tell the difference. Perhaps you could if you had the headphones on or maybe it's just such a slight difference that... Uh, uh, you know, it might be worth it, but in this case, I'm going to try to show you the absolute um, real big highlights of, of the Goliath V2. Starting at number one, we have the 12-string acoustic guitar. This is going to be a fast strum. I wanted you to be able to uh, distinguish uh, between the, like I said, between the before and after for uh, the compression and the EQ, and I thought with a fast strum, it would uh, show it the best. So here we go. Let's take a listen to... Uh, track one, 12 string strum fast. Uh, let's take off the Goliath. Uh, we'll bypass that as you can see here. And it sounds something like this. All right, you can definitely tell the uh, distinction in the, in the chords and the strum and the fast strum, not that you would normally play John Denver at 150 miles an hour, but uh, we can definitely hear the, uh, uh, hear the Goliath kicking in and, and separating uh, and presenting the transients in, the, in a good way here. Um, let us take a quick look <clears throat> at just a six string. Um, this is just kind of a slow picking sort of uh, sound. And uh, let's just take a listen to um, the same settings, the same presets that I had uh, for the last one. So you can hear uh, those strings cutting through, and that's really primarily what we'd like to do sometimes with compression. Um, it will really bring the sound of this guitar out to the forefront without having to jack up the volume, uh, invade on other uh, instruments, um, EQ space. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like home. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me, that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like home. I so you can hear that really does bring uh, the vocals to front and center, and uh, you, it's a distinction in the quality of the singing as well, because now we can actually hear what the singer's saying and not try to guess like we used to back in the 80s or 70s, trying to figure out what in the world people were singing. You can actually hear the vocals now. <clears throat> so for this next example, I'm going to uh, use drums here. I'm going to go with the um, One Kit Wonder, where is it, the... Uh, Modern Fusion kit. Love the sound of that kit. So let's see what we can have uh, uh, Goliath, how we can have Goliath improve that sound. 
Okay, so I have uh, three separate um, drum MIDI tracks here um, using my uh, using my One Kit Wonder uh, Modern Fusion Kit. Um, on the Goliath, I'm going to select. Uh, I'm just going to go through the 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 uh, drums settings that are here, so we can hear how those sound. <clears throat> So they all do something a little bit different. They all feature a little bit uh, different types of nuances and um, sounds that you want to get out of your drums or other, your, your other instruments and things. In going further into the saturation, the alloy setting, uh, they say that it gives us more of a, a clean, silky analog uh, processing sound. Uh, the tube setting here. Uh, the tube, uh, it says um, that uh, it will bring second order harmonics to your material. We'll test that out. Um, the tape setting here, they claim that they have used the ATR700 tape recorder uh, to uh, deliver the warmth and the um, sort of the character of uh, analog tape. And lastly is the vinyl setting, uh, which features an analog uh, chain. Uh, going to a Neumann vin uh, vinyl cutting machine and multiple IRs sampled from the dub plate. Now that's a mouthful, uh, but basically what they're saying is it can now sound like a record. Uh, the drive control here, this is going to uh, uh, give you the drive for the saturation and in input. Um, this next, uh, this next knob here for the uh, envelope EQ mix, originally I thought, hey, is this a balance between envelope and an EQ, which really wouldn't make sense. No, this is actually just the wet-dry, um, typical wet-dry knob. And, of course, the output. So the three-band uh, EQ over here, uh, these are a uh, fr fixed frequencies for, for each. Uh, the low... Um, the low end here is going to be at uh, 65 hertz, um, and we have the mid. The mid is at 1.5, kind of gives you that, uh, that well, right deep in the higher mid range there. And then the last here is the 15K range for air, very high um, frequencies. All of these um, frequencies, as it says here, are, are plus and minus 10 dB. Personally, for the EQ being a three band, I mean, it's going to be a nice sweetener at the end uh, to kind of tailor the sound as much as you needed it uh, tailored. But if it, uh, you know, for larger EQing type of jobs, you might go with a different type of EQ, but this is a, a good start um, for the EQ when you're in your chain. And moving over to the envelope section. Uh, again, on off switches for both of these, you have the threshold uh, for when the envelope uh, is supposed to start working. Um, and then the attack here is uh, for the speed of the attack coming from fast to slow. And then the release, uh, which is also from fast to slow. Uh, somebody had mentioned before something about this, uh, the, about the ratio. Uh, typically in compressors, you have a two for one, four, four to one, two for one, two to one, four to one, you know, those types of things. And looking up the information, uh, this ratio starts as a two to one ratio. 
um, which some users found odd, but how would they end up getting a uh, no ratio? Just turn the thing off, I, I suppose. Um, but again, all of this being driven through, um, you can introduce as much or as little of the compression that you want. Say you have a, um, a parallel compression um, auxiliary bus that you're sending these to. All in all, uh, I really enjoyed working with the Goliath V2. Um, it, uh, it has a lot more power to it than, than uh, I originally gave it credit for. The UI is fantastic. Uh, and uh, I also should mention that, it, uh, that this plugin does offer oversampling. So to describe oversampling here, we can go from off to eight times. Uh, the, whole the whole point of oversampling is to eliminate um, garbage distortion distortion you don't want. Um, it's also going to improve the resolution and the signal to noise ratio. Um, 